Hello friends. In the past few lectures, we have gone through the theory of Kirchhoff's current law and we have done some problems to understand the concept clearly. In this lecture, we are going to start another important concept which is called Kirchhoff's voltage law. So without wasting any time, let us get into the definition. The definition of Kirchhoff's voltage law is that the algebraic sum, the algebraic sum of voltages, the algebraic sum of voltages at any instant, at any instant around a closed, around a closed path is zero. Alright, so this is the statement of Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, you have to see the emphasis is that it is around a closed path. So now itself you have to understand there is no specific direction mentioned. You can either go around the closed path in clockwise direction or you can go around in the anti-clockwise direction. In any case, the algebraic sum of voltages around the closed path will be equal to zero. To understand this, let us draw a simple circuit. Alright, let us draw a simple circuit here. It is a, it is a battery and you have three resistances connected. Alright, so this is E and let this resistance be R1 and this is R2 and R3. So clearly you know that a current will be set up through this circuit and when current moves and there is a resistance present. So actually I have already defined that current is actually through of electrons, right? So when the electrons move, they collide with the atoms in the element resistance and to overcome this, the source has to do work to complete the circuit all right so let us take the total work done by the source e to be w so total work done by the source e equal to w all right so this w will be equal to the work done to cross the resistance r1 so let me call it w1 plus the work done to cross r2 and work done to cross R3. Alright. Now, assuming that the same charge is flowing throughout the circuit, so if we divide everything divided by charge, Q, Q, and you know that work done per unit charge is nothing but the voltage. So, W by Q is nothing but E, and W1 by Q should be V1. So, let me put it as V1 here. Alright. This is V2, and this is v3 so this is v1 plus v2 plus v3 now if we take e to the other side i will start my passive sign conventions now so v1 plus v2 plus v3 all right plus minus e equal to 0 now i have told you that in kirchhoff's voltage law it is the algebraic sum of voltage around a closed path so now you have to select the direction in which you are going to move so that is how you apply Kirchhoff's law. So in this circuit, how do you apply Kirchhoff's law? All right. So first you select a direction of your movement. So for example, you are starting at A and you are moving in this direction. All right. So you are moving in this direction. So the passive sign convention is, so the passive sign convention, passive sign convention. All right. The passive sign convention is that, when we enter when we enter a positive terminal all right a positive terminal we put a positive sign all right when we enter a negative terminal we put a negative sign okay so this convention will hold good when all the voltages and polarities are defined or Based on the current direction, you have put the positive and negative sign. For example, let me just make a copy of this circuit here. I will make a new one. I am making a new one here. So this is the circuit. So this is E, this is R1, this is R2 and this is R3. Now let us take the current to be in this direction. This is of our choice. All right? Now I have told you through a resistance when current flows, the entering side will be a positive side. 
to satisfy the power absorption side conversion. All right, so you get here plus minus V1, and this V1 is equal to I into R. So the same current is going to come here. So here it will be a positive side V2, and V2 will be equal to I into R2, and here it enters the here it enters the R3, and so this is V3. So V3 is equal to I into R3. This is based on Ohm's law. Now I am going to introduce another sign conversion, which is going to be useful in problems. All right. Now in every case, it is difficult to write the voltages, mark the polarities. That is going to be a difficult job, and it is going to be consuming a lot of time. So to avoid that, there is another sign convention. All right. So this is anyway there. So when you come across sources, you have to anyway use this sign convention, which I have already given. Along this, we will have a third and fourth sign convention. Which I use. So let us draw the circuit once again. Okay, this is I two R. So this is E. All right, this is R one, this is R two, and R three. Now I do not know the current value, so I just put the current in the direction which I like. So I am putting it in this direction. Now you have to select a direction of movement around the loop. Right? So it is best to select the same direction as the current direction. So this red color line which I am drawing is the direction in which I am going to go. Okay. So how do you put the equations? Now that is where the third sign convention comes. So when our direction and the current direction are the same, all right, the voltage drop will have a positive sign. The voltage drop will have a positive sign. The fourth is that when our direction, that is our movement direction across the loop, our direction and the current direction are different, the voltage drop will be having a negative sign. This is also very useful in doing problems. So by using this three and four sign convention, let us try to put this equation here. So I am starting at this point, right? I am starting at A and I will end at A. To satisfy Kirchhoff's voltage law. So here you see, I am going to move like this. I am going to move in clockwise direction. So first one, the current I and I am moving in the same direction through the resistance R1. So plus I R1. All right. The second resistance also, me and the current are in the same direction. So it will have a plus I R2. All right. And uh, the third resistance also. The current direction and my direction of travel are same, so plus I R three, and we here we enter the negative terminal. So when we enter the negative terminal, you have to put a negative sign, so minus E equal to zero. And naturally, I have already defined V one is equal to I one R one, V two is equal to I two I R two, and V three is equal to I R three. So again, so we, this is V one, this is V two, this is V three, and minus E equal to zero. So just different approaches to doing the same thing. Now, it is very important that you understand these four rules and follow it throughout the course, because when we are going to do mesh analysis, a lot of application will come in the third and fourth sign convention which I have taught, which is when our direction and the current direction are same, the voltage drop is positive. When our direction and the current direction are different, the voltage drop will be negative. Let us just finish this lecture session by doing a simple problem. Yeah. Now, in this question, they have asked us to find the value of Ix. All right. Now, Ix is given to be like this. This is Ix. In the problem, the Ix is given to be in this direction. So, let us also move in the same direction. Okay. Now, let us apply case here, KVL here. Let us apply KVL. So, we are also moving in this direction. So. I enter a negative sign, so minus seven here, and here I enter a positive Vx, so I can put plus Vx, and then I enter a negative. I enter the five volt in the negative sign, so it is zero. That means Vx is equal to twelve volt, and which means Ix is equal to the voltage Vx is given is found to be twelve volt, so twelve divided by hundred amperes. Now let us write the same equation using the 
other uh, third and fourth rule also. Now here you will get minus 7 volt as usual. Alright. So now the direction in which I am traveling and the given current direction are the same. So here you are going to have I, a positive voltage drop Ix into 100 and then you are entering a negative 5 and that means Ix you are getting directly to be equal to 12 by meter. Alright. So here also you have to find the value of Ix the second problem. Alright. Now I think I have forgot to mark the voltage value there. Yeah, it is 3 volts. It is 3 volts. Now let us move around the loop. Okay. Now let us start from here and when we go around this loop, let us see what happens. When I am going around the loop, I encounter a positive sign. So it is a positive one. And then here the current direction and my direction is same. So plus there will be a voltage drop 10 into Ix. And here I am reaching a positive sign again. So plus 3 equal to 0. That is Ix is equal to minus 4 divided by 10 amperes. I will stop the lecture here because I think it has gone a little bit long. Please go through the sign conventions properly. Understand them properly. In the next lecture we will do a lot of problems so that we can understand the concept of how using how to use the Kirchhoff's voltage law. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.